Now, new tonight, we have the final poll of the Iowa caucus before the Iowa caucus, which is 48 hours away. Des Moines Register has just released it, and here you go. Let's look at it together. Donald Trump, number one, 48. That is an extraordinary number. He wants to get over 50. He wants that early knockout. Nikki Haley, uh, again, this is a second consecutive poll where she is second, major poll. Ron DeSantis at 16, Haley at 20. Vic Ramaswamy doing better than most. He, uh, he's at 8. And Asa Hutchinson still in the race for some reason. Joining us now for analysis, live from Iowa, RNC chairwoman Rhonda McDaniel. Uh, Rhonda, thanks so much for joining us. Your reaction to that poll? Well, that's a big number. I, I think the reality is a win's a win. And in Iowa, it's different because it's who has the best ground game, who has the caucus go goers organized, who's going to get them out to these caucuses. Organization on the ground really, really matters. So I know these polls are important. But I do think President Trump's lead is, is very large. The weather, it's the X factor. Uh, people talk about passion and people talk about complacency. Both things could be, uh, play a role in this. What do you consider a good turnout for the Republican Party? What's the number? You know, anything close to 150,000 would be a record turnout. That'd be a very high turnout. I think Republicans are energized. I've seen this today. I've been on the ground in Des Moines. It is cold. It is frigid cold. But the Democrats abandoned Iowa. They walked away from the state. So I think Republicans have two things to prove. One, that they're tough, which they are. They're going to come out and caucus because they care about this country. They care about Iowa being the first in the nation caucus. And they want to prove the Democrats wrong for walking, for walking away from the state. Do you believe the thresholds you put in and increased with the debate structure helped the cause? You have a very small field compared to last time. Yeah, so for context, in 2015, heading into Iowa, we still had 14 candidates on the debate stage. We still had two debate stages. And we were very clear-eyed, the Republican Party, the Republican National Committee, that we did not want a debate stage of people seeking book deals, media contracts, and cabinet positions, that we wanted to winnow the field so the voters could see legitimate candidates for president. And I think that's what they're getting here in Iowa. They're getting to get to meet them up close and personal. They're shaking their hand. They're talking to them. And they are really vetting these, these candidates. And Iowans take this role seriously. And they are going to do their work on Monday. Rana, um, it must, it's kind of a bit of a blow to the parties. Both the Democrats and Republicans in a recent survey were told that only 27 percent of the country identify as Democrats. Only 27 percent identify as Republicans. And now 43 percent identify as independents. Are the parties failing their, uh, their people or the people? I, I don't think that's the case. I think more and more people don't identify with one ideology. They want to have that freedom. I do think also you're seeing this migration of Republicans to red states. Republicans are going to Florida and Texas, which is making purple states and blue states bluer. So the electoral path to the presidency for us does go through states like right. Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. So we can't just win with Republicans. Mm. And this is what I say all the time. We can't be in an echo chamber of just Republicans. We have to be able to appeal to independents if we're going to win the White House and Senate and House seats across the country. All right. Uh, first things first, uh, the thing's going to be different this time is there's so many third-party candidate possibilities, you know, about uh, some of the fringe candidates like Jill Stein. But now you got this no-labels uh, outfit and Joe Manchin having what seems to be all but a declared candidacy looking for a running mate. Here is Joe Manchin a couple of days ago. So everyone says, well, you're running for this or running for that. And I says, no, I'm running to basically bring the country together. I want you to know there's hope. There's more people like us that believe that the centrist, center left, center right, the grand old party and the old blue dog Democrats that were there could always get together and make a deal. And we've got to get back to that. You worry about no labels. Do you worry about Joe Manchin? I think Joe Biden should. I mean, let's look at both of these candidates, RFK and Joe Manchin, these are Democrats, disaffected Democrats who are rebuking their incumbent president. And we're seeing Democrat after Democrat in polls saying, we do not want Joe Biden to be our nominee. He hasn't done hardly any campaign events. He's done two in the past 20, 22 days. This is a rebuke from his own party. And I think this is mm -hmm. a sign of their party splintering that you have these two parties potentially running uh, different candidates in this presidential election. Rana, uh, Rana sadly, I won't see you in Iowa. Uh, but I will see you in New Hampshire. Best of luck. It's going to be exciting. Hopefully it comes off uh, well. Ronna McDaniel, thank you.
Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me. You got it. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.